Um, so this is a film that creates such a complete world. Uh, you get the sense that there's, you know, whole neighborhoods and worlds off screen that you're not seeing. Um, I mean, how, but you know, you decide, you shoot it in a way that a lot of that is concealed. Um, I wonder if you could talk about that kind of decision. Yeah, uh, very, first of all, uh, you, you want to say something, no? Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> He's doing my job better than I am. Um, just want to mention that uh, this, this Q&A will be a little brief because of the theater scheduling, but on Saturday uh, we invite you to come to a full talk with Laszlo um, at 5 p.m. Uh, across the street in the amphitheater. That'll be an hour-long talk um, with clips um, where we'll be talking about his work. Um, also, uh, don't forget there's a reception in the lobby just right across. Uh, so, thank you. Yeah, all the more that, you know, it's not ideal, I think, to, to, for us to talk about this film immediately for uh, you um, <laughs> poor, uh, poor audience, you know, <laughs> facing the movie and then immediately talking it's it's not the ideal uh, thing to I would say I would argue that, uh, that, that it's good to in, let, let the film infuse a little bit, but to to answer your question, uh, I really wanted to create those layers of reality around the main character, you know, in 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 the image and in sound, to have uh, this uh, this uh, the, 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 you know the, these these layers of you know, she, she's trying to open the curtains to, you know, to the to, to to what she wants to find out, and and to if there's a truth, then to to that truth. And the more she she opens the curtains, the more she finds new layers behind. Uh, that's why I, I refer to a labyrinth, and I really conceive this film as a sort of we are in the maze of one one mind and uh, that's how I approached it and and for that we we needed to uh, to create the, the the feeling that there's a there's a world and, a, and there's a whirlwind of of things going on and spiraling and we are not as the main character the audience is also part of this process of not being able to always control to be to be in control and I know that this is exactly the opposite way as you know nowadays films operate because they want to put the audience entirely in control and they don't want to 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 go through the audience but i really i really think that we have to trust the audience and and let them uh work and let their imagination work during the process yeah yeah it's not it's it's a movie where you're you know, it's, not, it's a movie where you gradually realize it's not a mystery that you're going to solve, you know. Uh, it, you know yeah, uh, well, because, yeah, is, is there one, one key that there's, could... There's no easy answer. If, if there's a key to open one door, you know, that's, that's the main character also thinks there's one key. If, if I f find the brother, then he will answer all, the, all, my, all, all my questions. And, and, and we have this, I think, this illusion also to... To, to, to look for, for th this one key. And I, I think in life, uh, human existence is much more complicated and it's harder to get that one key, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such a, it's, I have to say, this is a movie that shows this time period in a way that I haven't really seen any movie do. It gives you a sense of something that's on the horizon, you know, a sense of uncertainty, a sense of something very bad that's just about to happen or might happen or is happening right now somewhere else. And some of that we kind of see. Um, but I wonder if you could talk about the historical setting and, you know, what's what's going on at that moment that kind of drew you in. Yeah, I know. And I know a lot of people come to me and, and ask for a manual to uh, <clears throat> not only to understand the movie, but also to approach this kind of you know the the period. The what do I what do I need to know about the period? And I say I say it's not entirely true, but I usually say it's you don't have to know anything about the period. It's you roughly know it's a hundred years ago, and I I gave the, you know the, you the information that it's before you know it's before uh, at the beginning of the century, and uh, and that's all you need to know in a way what you 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 were introduced with. Uh, what interested me is really to to go into the uh, the very birth of the century in a way. Uh, uh, try to um, 
um, to understand, um, well, rather to feel uh, 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 the atmosphere of, of a world that is so sophisticated and you can see it's a sophisticated, very refined world with all these hats and codes and, uh, you know, stratifications and, um, and, and movement and, and building and the, the smell of something that's about to, you know, blossom in a way. And it's blossoming, <clears throat> but at the same time, there is something underneath that's already produced by this very society that is undoing it. So it's, it's about this, uh, I guess, this um, desire to, uh, when we're building something as human s uh, civilizations, to or already, we're already building our, our very uh, um, demise. And, 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 the, and the suicide of, this, of the civilization is for me uh, a mystery, uh, I guess, you know, is, you know some, some people came to me after the film and asked me, why, why isn't it obvious what happened to Europe at the beginning of the, the 20th century? You know, you have the facts, but, but I responded that uh, even if you have the facts, you, it's still a mystery. You can produce any kind of evidence of any, you know, uh, and, 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 and you can produce historical um, uh, discussions and, and, and arguments, but I'm, I, I'm not willing to give up on the fact that, that there's a, something of a mystery in the heart of, of the European destruction. Uh, when you take, uh, well, she happens to, the main character, she happens to be played by by the woman, the young woman who was in Son of Soul and the only female uh, part in it. And, and <clears throat> what I understood after making the film is that uh, you, you put the, 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 the face of this uh, young woman that you see in the barracks in Son of Soul, d d desperate and, and really, really without any hope. And, and, and and there's no, n n nothing worse than this, I guess, you know, as, a, as, as a kind of situation for a human being, uh, the, the extermination camp. And, um, and you put her next to her face, the face of Iris, and it's the same woman in a strange, you know, a strange uh, linkage of things, I guess. And, uh, and uh, it's the same woman, and yet it's, they're only separated you know, by a you know, generation, or by so. a generation, and and there's you cannot understand that these are from the same planet or same dimension. How did this world go into mass annihilation of people on an industrial level? And and when we approach the first world war, I guess that's also something. Am I going too long now? I, yeah, of course I am. A, there's a lot but to the, talk the, about. But the, 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 uh, when, when you go into the trenches, you, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and, you know, killing people uh, for, you know, yard, a few yards, you kill uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Right. And that's what happened. It's the, you, the use of technology for, um, <clears throat> for, for when, when it could have been used for different reasons, that the, the, and then finishing in, in, in the concentration extermination camps and all the totalitarian regimes of the century, then, then you ask yourself things about civilizations, questions about civilizations, and I guess that's what I was, that was underneath uh, my approach in this film. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a movie where you were saying that there are different layers to it, so there are different layers to the mystery. Some of it's a personal mystery, some of it's like a familial mystery, but then there's just the mystery of history. Why did that happen? And then why did another world war happen, you know, only, you know, 20 years after that? Um, and in fact, I thought there was something of an echo or a foreshadowing of World War II uh, in the main character's story because she's coming back where her family had lost an establishment and she's kind of, the people are like, what are you doing here? Um, which is a kind of return that in some ways feels like what happened with World War II and after World War II. Um, but uh, um, you mentioned uh, Son of Soul. Uh, one interesting thing about both those, these movies is they use a similar uh, technique of camera work. Uh, these long, you know, kind of snaking shots. Uh, I, I wonder if you could talk about, uh, you know, how you plan something like that, because 
often we're following iris through these long routes and I mean it must require a certain amount of mapping out and you know how do you block out scenes like that? Well first of all I, I really made this film because I wanted to follow the subjective perception and and the limitations linked to this perception to um, uh, and and convey that through to 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 the viewer, I really believe that that's something that we're losing, especially in cinema. And I, I really think that the the way we're looking at films and the w way films are made are more and more uh, standardized and and uh, follow more and more of a of a, uh, a, a, a completely you know a, a, a path that's never been that narrow. And I was, um, uh, and you can see it through the you know multiplication of angles, the uh, uh, the, the the over editing that we can we can see in films, the uh, the, the godlike point of view that's uh, the omniscient narration and 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 the access to the character that's always very generous. You know the audience can very very generously have you know uh, access to the characters and i think that's really a narrowing of 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 cinema and 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 the fact that we're not questioning it is 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 part of the uh, of the problem in today's uh, uh, problem not only on the on a cinema level but also on, i think on a civilizational level because we rely more more and more on 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 on, on internet and and we we you know, on the television and and these these techniques and styles have completely uh, transform the way we communicate. It. We communicate, and also, the, uh, I think, reflect uh, uh, the narcissism and the the, the sense of uh, um, and sense of um, being uh, gods, almost like gods in our existence. And I, I really believe that I wanted to to go back to the to the fragility of human perception. And I I, I, I know it's it's, but it's also well, it's always I guess the uh, what what you want to say on a almost like a philosophical level, if you want to use big words, uh, to uh, to 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 convey uh, the fact that we are much more limited than what we want to you know right. communicate. And yeah. so, uh, well, I, I guess I have to say things on s Saturday on on, oh, yeah. on how to save I some plan the, for Saturday, the, the, right. the shots. <laughs> Also, you know, I, I want to whoever make is interested in yeah. how I plan these shots, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to, <laughs> have come, to come back, back unfortunately. Saturday. It's a cliffhanger. Um, I want to make sure we get a couple of questions from the audience um, uh, here in the third row right here. If you, I'm sorry, if you could just wait for the uh, um, uh, microphone so we can hear you. Um, hello. Yo, uh, estate uh, Kivanok. Good evening. This is Hungarian. Uh, <laughs> <for good. laughs> yeah. So um, I see a common theme in your films as this like shedding light on uh, injustices, and I think that's interesting. Yeah. Is the mic on? Is it? Did the switch come on? Is it? Uh, yeah. Okay, I can speak louder. Um, yeah. So I'm saying I, I see this theme in your films as kind of shedding light on injustices, like the camera in Son of Saul and the role of Hirlop in this film. Um, as a fellow Hungarian, I'm concerned about the way that most of the Hungarian news outlets rely on government funding and favorable government contracts to stay in business. In return, these news outlets provide uh, an abundance of pro-government propaganda. My question to you is, could you talk a little bit about whether artists in Hungary have the freedom and the resources to challenge the racist, xenophobic, and autocratic acts of their government? Well, I s starting with an easy question. <laughs> well, is it a question? Um, the thing is that I don't want to be presumptuous in answering, you know, instead of Hungarians who are there and really have difficulties, uh, and artists in Hungary who have difficulties expressing themselves. I am in a, in a, in a situation, I've been in a situation that's more fortunate uh, since, you know, Son of Soul. Uh, so I don't want to... I mean, I, I wouldn't give you the the um, the sort of objective perception or, or reality of only a more more subjective one. So uh, what I can say is that interesting. I, I could make this film, which I think has no not much of a propaganda, um, you know, uh, content. Uh, and the interesting thing is also is, uh, you know, I don't want to defend Hungary that much, but I have to say that 
Um, f uh, you know, Son of Saul was a film that nobody in Europe wanted to fund but Hungary. Um, and, and that I couldn't get through the, uh, the funding system, the state funding systems in France, for, for example, or, or in other countries, I couldn't, couldn't get it made. And uh, that also says something about, you know, I think I see censorship in a, in a broader sense, also working as a, functioning as a sort of, sort of self-censoring uh, me mechanism, and it's definitely wor at work within filmmakers uh, because now we're keen on, maybe too keen on, on making subjects instead of making cinema. You know, with, you know, talking about subjects. You know, like cinema almost it, for it me seems. almost becoming a sort of uh, part of journalism, and I uh, and I, I don't think it should function as that. It, it should defend itself on its. On ground and not and not be uh, and be really separate and distinct and uh, so it's a, it's a long question that I, I I couldn't answer in a very short way and I also think that you said what you wanted to say <laughs> but um, but uh, well it would it would be a longer conversation obviously and it's it's not it's I don't think it's it's a simple it's a simple thing I just want to point out point out that that. The way culture works, the funding of culture works, that's an entirely different debate. I mean, it's a whole long debate, and I don't want to just start like that and, and talk in general, gen, general terms and not sure. going into the detail. Yeah, it's hard to do that justice uh, right here. Um, we, we're, we have very short turnaround for the next show, but uh, if we can get one more question in, that would be great. Uh, maybe someone further, further back, a gentleman in the white shirt. Hi, uh, I'd like to hear about your writing process specifically with what you were saying regarding limited perspective and restricted range of narration. Does it affect what type of stories you seek out, what time periods you were looking at? And I, I'd just like to hear you talk about when you're writing, how you construct a limited perspective like that. Thank you. Well, you have to come back on Saturday also for the to, to, for uh, an entire uh, um, uh, analysis of that if uh, anybody's interested. But I ha I have to say that um, well, you have to incorporate in the writing process the point of view. Uh, if you don't int integrate the point of view, I think that's a problem, uh, especially for this kind of film. That that is about the point of view and 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 the um, you know the limitations of one character, and uh, so it is included in the screenplay. Uh, it's uh, um, I I work with scenes. Well, I work with co-writers uh, first and foremost, and I. I, 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 I am better, I'm not as good as in structure as in, uh, I'm better with scene design, so I, I, I usually, that's how I, you know, it's very frustrating because it takes so, so much time before I get to scene design because first I, I write the structure. If I don't, I'm not with co-writers. So if we're not satisfied with the structure, we don't go into the, the, scene, the scenes themselves. So I get frustrated because it's it's a long it takes a long time before I can get actually uh, write anything that's uh, satisfactory. Uh, although I have to say it's almost almost always very very frustrating to to write. Uh, it's a never-ending frustration. If you're satisfied with what you write, then um, well, maybe you're doing it screwed. wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, something. I mean, I mean, maybe it's also the the Eastern European uh, problem of uh, being con constantly, uh, um, you know, battling with the forces of uh, uncertainty <laughs> and um, and frustration of uh, of being an imposter and things like that. So, but but the. Um, uh, so yeah, you have to come back on Saturday. I guess I don't want. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm right, because it takes like ten minutes to, to answer this. Okay, <laughs> the full for the full answer. Um, well, I'm afraid that I think that's all the time uh, we have for here. Um, but Lazo, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks.